Kansas, gateway to Oz. Under the rainbow, this is where it was. Hollyhocks and red ripe tomatoes, and churned homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. It's the best part of Dorothy's dream. Today Around Kansas introduces us to the black tip prairie dog that once lived throughout the Great Plains. Next is the story of My Happiness, a song written by Betty Blasco and recorded by many singers over the years. Then enjoy a poem from Ron Wilson and our final story about the lonesome tumbleweed, an iconic symbol of the American West. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress, powered by Kansas farmers. This segment is brought to you by Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. Just a short drive down the Yellow Brick Road. Well, here we are again. It's Wednesday. Keep I'm Frank. <laughs> yeah, I'm Frank. That's Deb. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. And my gosh, September, it's fall. Can you believe I know, that? Isn't it, it is fall of the year already. It's just unreal. Yeah. So what are you up to, Frankie? Oh, well, you know, traveling around with, with, with the fall and the fall weather that, that we've had, uh, it's nice to get out on two wheels again. So I've been out on two wheels and three wheels because uh, one of our advertisers on Ren Radio is Cycle Zone, and they have the Can Am Spiders, which uh, has the two wheels up front and the one wheel oh, in the back. Cool. Oh, boy, is that fun. Let me tell you, going through the Flint Hills this time of year. Uh, Isn't it beautiful? It is absolutely gorgeous. So, beautiful. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, uh, in fact, ways to go through the Flint Hills. My favorite one is K4 and up through... Uh, uh, Eskridge and then yeah. over through Alma and then cross the interstate and come back on Highway 24 uh, through the small towns there. So it's a fun time. You know, and Kansas Tourism has those um, scenic byways, mm -hmm. brochures, so those will map out for you if you want to take, uh, and by all means, take the back roads. I love taking the back roads. Um, get some of those brochures from um, Kansas Department of Tourism, they do a great job. Our friend Andrea Etzel out there is always sharing pictures of places that she's been. Of course, she spent a lot of time in the Flint Hills lately, so it's really, really beautiful time to see it. Well, in and around Topeka, too, I don't know if you know about it, but uh, over at Tecumseh, if you go over to First Street, mm -hmm. there is a river road that goes right along the river there, and the trees are over the road, and you can go all the way, all the way over to Lecompton. That's beautiful. I've oh, done that many yeah. times. And so then in Lecompton, of course, you can see the bald eagles mm -hmm. along the river there. So it's a, I mean, it's a beautiful time of the year in this state. It sure is, no matter where you are. What corner of the state you're in, you know, send us your pictures. I want to see them. Yeah. yeah you yeah. know, this weekend, um, going down to the southwest corner of the state, going to Medicine Lodge, mm -hmm. which is uh, uh, South Kansas, for the Medicine Lodge Peace Treaty Pageant. Cannot wait. And then, of course, the 60th reunion of the cast of Gunsmoke in Dodge Oh, City. Mr. Dillon, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, for those of you who remember Chester, that's right. <laughs> Mr. Dillon. Well, you know, and Randy Sparks did a song, Get Out of Dodge and Move to Medicine Lodge. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to both places. Right, we're going to hit them both. Yeah, me and Michael the camera guy are going to head down there and do some great interviews. So Dodge really looking City. forward to it. Yes. Okay. We'll be back. We'll be back. Hey folks, Dr. Dan here, and I'm inviting you to come to the McCain Auditorium on October 12th to be a part of the Henry C. Gardner Global Food Systems Lecture Series, and the featured speaker will be Greg Page. He's going to discuss climate change and agriculture. When you think of climate change and the impact that agriculture may have on it, everybody involved with agriculture needs to be there. I hope that you can attend. We'll see you on the Kansas State campus. Again, that's October 12th, McCain Auditorium, and I'll see you down the road. Now another gardening tip with Annette Jackson. Now is the time to overseed your lawn. The success of your lawn depends on the quality you plant and the proper fertilizer. Plant 100% weed-free seed with top-rated varieties tested by KSU. Always use Fertilone New Lawn Starter for faster, stronger root development. 
Don't waste time and money with lower quality seed from the box stores. Join the Jackson's Greenhouse WIVW Garden Club and save 10% on your lawn seed and Fertilome new lawn starter. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. To see this show and past episodes of Ag AM in Kansas, go online to agamincansas.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Time over, we're back. <laughs> okay, when I moved to Kansas, I had never seen a prairie dog until I moved to Kansas. So all those great things that you associate with the West and moving West, I had not seen. And I have to tell you, nothing has fascinated me more than the prairie dogs. When we went even farther West, we had friends visiting from back East went the uh, little big horn that you know western mm -hmm. kansas we did everything go to devil's tower devil's tower has this huge prairie dog town and they are not skittish like many of the prairie dogs in western kansas because kansas prairie dogs get shot at so the ones <laughs> up at devil's tower where it is a protected environment and they can't shoot at them because it's a national park and all that good stuff they're not skittish so you can i everybody's looking at devil's tower and they're like oh wow and I'm over here with the prairie dogs. And I'm like, they're the funniest little animal because, you know, they're standing up there and, you know, keeping watch. And then it's like, oh, phone call. And they just jump down, you know, back into the hole or, you know, supper's burning. They're just, they're the funniest <laughs> little creatures. Can you eat them? You can. And, you know, people who were coming over the wagon trains, um, they talk about those little dogs more than any other creature because it, it was fascinating to them too. And yeah, if they couldn't find enough game or were they, they did eat them. Um, I've never had one myself. I don't know, don't have any prairie dog recipes. Uh, you might share some if you got them, but uh, well, I don't they, know. they can be eaten. Yeah. On your way to Dodge City, if you run over <laughs> yeah, one, really? you might stop and have a little road kill. Yeah, a little roast that one on the side of the road or something. Yeah, that, uh, there's a plan. Okay. Uh, something else for the menu. <laughs> Let's take a look at those little creatures. Black-tailed prairie dogs, named for their black-tipped tails and dog-like bark, once lived throughout the Great Plains in towns that extended for miles and contained hundreds of thousands of individuals. The rodents excavate a complex underground system of tunnels and rooms that may be as deep as 15 feet, with horizontal tunnels reaching 10 to 15 feet long. The soil is pushed to the surface to create numerous mounds. They forage throughout the day with sentinels sitting upright, standing guard as the others feed. When a predator is sighted, the sentinel barks and the entire colony scampers to their protective burrows. Abandoned burrows provide homes for spiders, salamanders, toads, ornate box turtles, snakes, and burrowing owls. Black-tailed prairie dogs live on the high plains from northern Mexico to southern Canada. They are found in short grass prairies and rangelands of the western half of Kansas. In the spring, females produce a single litter of two to ten pups. They may live up to eight years. Prairie dogs feed primarily on green vegetation, including grasses, seeds, stems, and the occasional insect. According to Parks and Wildlife Office in Pratt, there is no closed hunting season on prairie dogs and no license required for Kansas residents. There is also no bag limit. A license is required for non-residents. Andy Chappell, wildlife biologist at the Cimarron National Grasslands, said that plague sweeps through the prairie dog population periodically. The last one occurred a couple of years ago, said Andy, and spread like wildfire, leaving less than 2,000 acres of prairie dog towns throughout the more than 100,000 acre park. 
Other animals, like coyotes who feed on the animals, seem unaffected by the disease. The Cimarron National Grasslands boasts not only prairie dogs, but some stunning western views, truly one of our state's treasures. Their offices are in Elkhart in southwestern Kansas, so give them a call and plan a visit. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. Around Kansas, brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook, or visit us online at sftmeats.com. And we're back. Now, you know, we've talked about uh, every now and then that I'm with WREN, renradio.net, which plays the oldies of the 50s, 60s, and early 70s. So, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm a disc jockey there on the weekends. And the thing is, is, is what we have found out when we've been doing this show is that there is a lot of talent from Kansas that is either a performer or a composer. And the thing is, well, big deal, every state has that. But think about this. There are three million people that live in the state of Kansas, so per capita, we have a lot of people we sure do. that have been and are currently in the entertainment industry. We sure do. Uh, I mean, we've got, uh, well, where we do the show. Today we're in the shadow of the Capitol, as you can see. And, uh, you know, uh, Rick Creedy, who is uh, the manager of this place, his son, of course, is on Broadway. Did you know that, Jeff Creedy? And we will do a segment on Jeff. Yes, we will. We're going to do it because that boy deserves his whole segment. Yeah. So I promise we'll get to that one. <laughs> so anyway, we've, we've done uh, opera singers. We've done uh, soap opera actors. And now we're going to do another composer. And I'm not going to give it away because it's kind of like one of those old Paul Harvey's, now you know the rest of the story. Uh, it's about a composer and a friend of yours, I believe, the son of the son this of. composer. That's right. Mm -hmm. And he happened to write a very, very famous song. She. She. She, yeah, she did. She wrote the, she wrote the lyrics of right. the song, yeah. You want to do this story? <laughs> anyway, uh, it, it, it is a fun story, and wait for the end of it when it's like, and now it's the rest of the story. You know, maybe we could just do that. We, Paul Harvey's gone. We can do it. Yeah, we can do it. We can just I don't do think the rest it's copyrighted. So anyway. Maybe not. But everything we do is like the rest of the story. You know, yeah. it's like there's so many cool connections. I was just over at the Kansas Humanities Council talking with Merle Riedel over there, and we were talking about, you know, they find a lot of really cool things all over the state, and you know, just. You think you've got a handle on it, you think you know everything, and then all of a sudden it's like, wow, I had no idea. You start, you know, connecting the dots and putting everybody together, yeah. and, and it's just amazing. And yeah, this next story. Yeah. Now, I, I will kind of give you a hint. You probably most know this song because Connie Francis had a big, big hit of it. It's called My Happiness. Take a look. Lou and Betty Blasco, they met while working at Jenkins Music in Kansas City many decades ago. At that time, Jenkins was a Midwestern dynasty with stores in five states and a thriving music publishing arm. Lou was also a musician who performed in the famed Coon Sanders Nighthawks, an early Kansas City jazz band. He had an eye for talent, too, and it was Lou who convinced Decca Records to sign two unknown artists, Count Basie and the Andrews sisters. After Lou and Betty married, they decided to start their own publishing business. One of Lou's properties was a melody written by a local band leader years earlier, and in 1947, he asked his wife to pen some lyrics to go along with the tune. The talented singer and songwriter did just that, and Lou recorded a duo performing the song later that year. On the flip side was a forgettable novelty song, which the recording label was pushing. Thankfully, 
a disc jockey in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, flipped the record over and played My Happiness. It spent 15 weeks in the top 10 and was named the Song of the Year by Cashbox Magazine in 1948. It also demonstrated that an independent record label could find success in a business dominated by big labels like RCA and Capital. Lou and Betty built their dream home in the new suburb of Leewood with the royalties from that song. But the story was far from over. On July 18, 1953, an 18-year-old truck driver paid about four bucks to make a demo record at the Memphis Recording Service. He chose his mother's favorite song, My Happiness. How I long to be with you, my happiness. Every At that time, a young Elvis Presley was a few years from immortality, and the Blascos had no way of knowing that their song would launch one of the most incredible careers in music. Sadly, Lou passed away from cancer in 1954 before seeing the success of Elvis or Connie Francis or any other number of artists who covered the song. In time, My Happiness would be recorded by Bing Crosby, Jim Reeves, Fats Domino, Frank Sinatra, Chris Isaac, and many, many more. Betty passed away peacefully in 2006, and Lou and Betty were inducted into the Kansas Music Hall of Fame in 2008. Yes, more Kansans in the spotlight. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. This segment is brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. See, now, didn't you like that? I the rest love of the story, it. Elvis, you know, when he, was, he, when he was very young. Now, I also got to tell you that I, I kind of did a little more looking into that. And Elvis uh, recorded that song on a 78. 78 RPM record. That's what yeah, they had. Yeah, for, for you kids who, yeah, look in the antique stores and you'll find, yeah. yeah. And actually, because the, the song My Happiness, of course, was his mother's favorite song. So he recorded that as a birthday present for, for her. Well, the Presleys were poor and they didn't have a record player. So they went to a friend's house that did have a record player. They played it. And of course, Elvis' mother was just, you know, very, very grateful. And they left. And they left the record. Okay? That record stayed in that family for six decades. Wow. Now, it came out in 2009 in an auction. And that record, a 78 record of My Happiness, which he sang a cappella, by the way. Sold for three hundred thousand dollars. Wow! Yeah, isn't that something? Yeah. Well, my friend Alan Blasco, his mother wrote the lyrics, and his dad, of course, was the. Um, um, they had the publishing company. Um, Betty and uh, Lou Blasco did, and Alan is a performer. He's a professional musician. Performs with the band River Rock. Mm. So they're in Kansas City a lot. I think every weekend, and I've heard Alan do that song. Uh, many times, and it—he's always very emotional over it. 
um, you know, because that song meant so much to his family. And so it's it's really, yeah, it's what a wonderful story. <laughs> I'm so glad we got to share that with you. Yeah, that's fun. It, it is. really is. And, and we should we should start thinking about, and now the rest of the and story. And now the rest of the story. <laughs> and now the rest of the story, yeah, this this great segue into tumbleweeds. <laughs> <laughs> Tumble and tumbleweeds. There's a song about There's that, too, song, of course. There's a song, exactly. Yeah. Songs of Pioneers, of course. You know, they great uh, cowboy band songs of the pioneers that who thought? you could take tumbleweeds and make something that pretty out of it, but they sure did. And when I was researching, um, talking about uh, the tumbleweed story, um, the lady in southwestern Kansas who is now selling tumbleweeds online and everything, you can order tumbleweeds. Can you believe that? People actually using tumbleweeds for wedding decorations, but I guess if you live, you know, in uh, cowboy life, maybe that would be appropriate. I don't know, but... How would you put one, though, on your wrist? Corsages, tumbleweed corsages. That's gotcha. brilliant. That is brilliant, Frank. <laughs> Let's take a look. In the black and white television world many of us grew up with, there were a few images that set the mood for the shootout at high noon or the train robbery. The saloon doors creaked as they swung in the wind. Boots with spurs clacked and jangled on wooden sidewalks, and tumbleweeds blew lonesomely across the dirt street. As iconic a symbol of the American West as it is, the tumbleweed is not native to the high plains of Kansas. It arrived, most experts agree, with flax seeds imported into the Dakotas from the Ukraine in the late 19th century. The Russian thistle then proliferated throughout the West. Roy Rogers and the Sons of the Pioneers secured the plant's place in Western folklore when they recorded Tumbling Tumbleweeds in 1934, romanticizing the invasive species. As is the case with nature, the tumbling has its purpose. It is the plant's way of spreading its seeds. After drying, the main stems of the Russian thistle can break off at the ground level under windy conditions, which exist most of the time on the high prairies. The plant skeletons will usually persist for at least one year and are typically found along fences and ditches. The plant requires very little water, another characteristic that suits it well to the American West. A large tumbleweed can produce 100,000 seeds. Some animals feed upon these seeds. Quail, ground squirrels, pocket and white-footed mice, prairie dogs, kangaroo rats, and mule deer. Livestock, on the other hand, face dangers of poisoning since nitrates build up inside the plant. It appears to be naturally impervious to weed killers like Roundup, putting it in that category with other pests that will likely survive nuclear holocaust. If you don't naturally have tumbleweeds, you may order one, or more, from the Prairie Tumbleweed Farm in southwestern Kansas. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Around Kansas, brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. Go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. We have all kinds of relationships in our daily lives. This poem I wrote is titled, The Date. She looked forward to the date when her boy would come to call, but the time moved oh so slowly. The hours seemed to crawl. That day she had a thorough bath, as many females do. Her cleanser of choice was the mane and tail shampoo. Her hair was brushed repeatedly so as to be pleasing to the sight. Her shoes were checked carefully to make certain they were right. She got sprayed all over before she went out with her fella, but the smell of this perfume was kind of like citronella. She had her outfit on, and boy, it sure looked right. She had a healthy glow, and her stockings were pure white. The hour was finally here, the young man came that day, with a flake of alfalfa as a sort of a bouquet. The boy was very happy. His heart was light as a feather. She also was happy, and the two went out together. The two of them went out for a pleasant summer ride on a pretty August evening through the Kansas countryside. And when the happy evening had come to an end, the young man said, I can't wait to go out again. 
It's an example of the social life out on the ranch, of course, and a night out together for the cowboy and his horse. Happy trips. Well, we hope you enjoyed today's show, and we'll be back uh, next Wednesday. So next Wednesday. For every, now. Every time. I'm Frank. I'm Deb. And we'll see you somewhere around, around Kansas. Kansas. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff Progress, powered by Kansas Farmers. Red ripe tomatoes and churned homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. We're the best part of Dorothy's dream. We're the best part of.